Okay, section 1.4 is another big topic in calculus, continuity. We're looking again at what happens specifically at one point. You've been discussing limits, and limits examine what happens on either side of one location. That location is your, your C value. C value is on the x-axis. So we've looked at it graphically. What happens coming from the left and from the right, if that is C. We looked at it algebraically. Limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. You know to factor and simplify and then plug in. And we used direct substitution. And we learned a few um, trig rules. And we learned about rationalizing the numerator. But now we also want to determine what's happening at one location. And this is called continuity if it's continuous there. So you will need your book today and we are on section 1-4 and 1-4 is on page 70. So I'll be following this text. All right. To say a function f of x is continuous at x equals c, that indicates that there is no interruption in the graph. So there are no holes, gaps, or what we call jumps. All right. Notice on this particular graph at c, there is a hole. At this particular graph at c, the first part of the graph is defined at c, but then it's undefined at the other location at c the left hand and the right hand behavior going towards C is, does not meet. They do not have the same value. So the limit does not exist. Come from the left or the right. This is, therefore, it does not have continuity at C. Here we have continuity at, I mean, excuse me, the limit does exist coming from the left and the right. But the value of the, of the limit does not equal the value of f of c. This is called removable discontinuity. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. All right. These are the conditions for where the graph for f is not continuous at x equals c. But first, let's talk about what does make a, a, a function continuous at c. There are three parts to the definition of continuity at a point. This is a big topic in AB calculus. You must know all three parts. It's part of the definition of continuity at a point. If in a free response they say, do you know that this function is continuous, then you have to state all three conditions and say why. All right. So f of c is defined. The limit of, of x approaches c of f of s, x exists and the limit of f of x, x approaches c of f of x equals f of c. So let's sketch a graph of what these conditions would look like to say f of x continues to c. Sketch a graph of what you think this would, would be, and I'll, we'll compare them tomorrow during class. What do you think, what graph would satisfy all three conditions? Just sketch that really quickly. All right, then that covers continuity. Those three things have to exist for it to say it's continuous at a point. Now then, let's talk about discontinuity. All right, so this is the definition of continuity on an open interval. A function is continuous at an open interval, A, B, if it's continuous at each point in the interval. Now, this is on an interval, not at a point. There's, that's two different things. A function that's continuous on the entire real line, negative infinity to infinity, is continu everywhere continuous. So here we have um, removable discontinuity. Notice that the left hand and the right hand limits exist. And the left hand and the right hand limit equal the same value coming towards C at both times. The limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. And the limit as x approaches c of f of x equal to some value L. 
that limit does exist. From the left hand to the right hand, it approaches the same value, even though the value of f of c, so the value of f of c does not equal the value of the limit as x approaches c. These are called, these, these are this type of continuity, they have the same name. They're called removable discontinuity. All right, non-removable discontinuity means that the, the limit coming from the left and the limit coming from the right are not the same. The limit of x approaches c coming from the left, and that means from the left, and that symbol we're going to talk about this a little bit more, does not equal the limit of x approaches c coming from the right. So this notation is new, and we're going to include that in the notes today. Notice that coming from the left, this y value is not the same as that y value. This is called non-removable discontinuity. On this graph, from the left side of zero, the graph is going toward negative infinity. On the right side, it's going toward positive infinity. So therefore, the limit does not exist. And the limit does not exist for this one going towards C. Okay. This type of discontinuity also has a name called a jump discontinuity because the value, it jumps from one location to another. These also go by removable because if this value was defined for the function, then it'd be continuous. This is still called a removable discontinuity because it just needs that value defined here where it can be continuous. So these are both removable discontinuities. All right. Now, I just introduced some new notation for you. Here it is formally. The limit coming from the left side of C, or left-hand limit, is the limit of x approaches C from the left side of C, of f of x is equal to L. And that's some value L. Limit coming from the right side has that little notation of plus sign. So when you see this notation, that's the limit coming from the right side of C, of f of x. It's the same process we've been using. We're just formalizing the notation. All right. So sometimes these are called the left-hand limits and the right-hand limits. And they allow us to determine the existence of a limit at one value at one location. So if the limit of x approaches c coming from the left side is equal to L, and the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right side, if that equals L, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists, and the limit as x approaches c of f of x would equal L. So if you know the left-hand and right-hand limits have the same value, the limit exists, and it's equal to that value. Notice that the left-hand and right-hand limits do not match, as we've been talking about, then the limit does not exist. All right. And we, talk, we use that to talk about continuity on a closed interval because we look at it coming from the left side toward a value or right side toward a value. All right. A function f is continuous on the closed interval if it is continuous on the open interval, and it's defined for every point in between, and the limit coming from the right toward the left endpoint is equal to that value, and the limit coming from the left toward the right endpoint is equal to that value. In other words, the endpoints are defined, the limit exists coming from one side. All right. So, so far we've talked about continuity, and you need to know the definition of continuity at a point. You need to know the two types of discontinuity and why they're called that. What a left-hand limit means, what a right-hand limit means, and its notation. The left-hand and right-hand limits can determine the limit exists. It's also used to, put, to determine continuity on a closed interval. 